Hi guys, welcome to Chart, where we chat about art. Today, we're here to talk about Search of Power, Jen Reed, by Mark Quinn, which is a very controversial statue that was recently unveiled in the plinth where Edward Coulson's statue was before Black Lives Matter protesters threw it to the river in Bristol. We are Finn, Mara, Javier, and Christy, and thank you for tuning in to listen to Chart Podcast. We are so stoked to have you here with us and that you take some time out of your day to hear us discuss any things that are happening in the art world. Without further ado, let's jump into the episode. Let's roll. <laughs> I am Mark Queen statue. Yeah. Mark Quinn. Quinn. <laughs> Mark Queen. <laughs> in this episode. It's called. In this episode. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> A surge of power. Jen Wright. Okay. Jen Reed. 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 Yeah, Please. that's how you pronounce it. Don't come anyway, back. enjoy the episode. Sell it to me. Like, yeah. come on. Um, should, we, well, should we first talk about what, what Edward did? Yeah. Why was Eddie a naughty boy? Yes. Um, so Who is Eddie? Edward. I didn't put any dates as to when he was alive. Okay. But the original statue was completed in 1894 by John Cassidy. So he was an English merchant, philanthropist, and a Tory member of Parliament. He was involved in the Atlantic slave trade. No. He was involved in like a company called the Royal African Company for 12 years. And he got like quite a senior role in that. Um, and it's estimated that during those 12 years, he transported over 84,000 men, uh, 19,000 of whom died. And he profited greatly over on the backs of the enslaved Africans, basically. And the thought process or the the way they justified shipping over West Africans to America was that they said that English laborers would not be able to handle the climate there, whereas Africans would be able to also, obviously, English laborers would have been been a lot more expensive to pay. Mm -hmm. And it was mostly sugar plantations. That's not ever really going to be known to what it all the atrocities he took part in but he was he engineered a lot of this like movement from one place to the other why exactly was he put on a plinth he was put on a plinth because i think he made loads of money for bristol in particular and he was a, obviously a philanthropist so he donated loads of money to schools and like whatever else was going on so I think that's probably why he was put on a statue and he was a member of parliament. Right. Mm. So there was like loads sense. of different things. After that, he was left alone. Loads of things are also named after him in Bristol and now they've since changed their name. Okay. Um, but in the 1990s is when people started to think like, oh, this guy, you know, there was a growing understanding of the things he did and they were starting to criticize his involvement in the slave trade the statue started to be seen as like commemorating the evils of slavery. And actually mm. when they were asking people or schools or whatever was named after him, Hey, maybe you should change the name at the time they said no. And it's only in the last few years that they have agreed that maybe it's like inappropriate to have like a girl's school named after this guy. So the statue also is commemorating a big reason why black citizens of Bristol are at a disadvantage still. So it's sort of like a reminder every day why things like education, employment and housing are tougher on minorities than white people. Yeah, on June so, 7th. Yeah, um, and Jen Reed was one of the ones who was a part of the throwing the statue in the river. Yeah, toppling it and yeah. getting rid. And, yeah, uh, and she climbed onto the plinth. And, and did that thing the in front of power. it. Yeah best that particular posture and obviously a lot of people took pictures of it and mark quinn who was our white british sculptor he saw that image on instagram and thought it is perfect for a sculpture and he yeah. if you will appropriated this identity that she carried as an activist and a pro and, and kind of claimed her stance and body in a way after he casted her. The statue of Edward was toppled down and then thrown into the river. They didn't end up putting it back. They just took it and they put it in like some sort of storage 
because I think it is important to not to erase that part of history, but to like, yeah, it's a, to something more educational yeah. as to what happened. Loads of stuff happened to that statue. Like they threw paint on it, took pictures with their knee on his neck to emulate what happened to George Floyd. Yeah. Yeah, obviously that picture, I think to Mark Quinn was like a symbol and he was like, this is amazing. I could capitalize on this. I could get involved. But there was a plan for the plinth to be some sort of program Mm. to decide what would be put on there instead. I think what's really really interesting about this whole situation was when the sculpture was first put on, everyone was really happy that it was there. Like everyone was celebrating that. That's rather incredible Mm -hmm. that this sculpture has appeared briefly after uh, the sculpture of Edward Colston has came down. After people kind of reflected on sort of the history of how Mark Wen does his works, um, it's a bit of like, oh, it's a thing that I can jump in, and then he would jump in it, and then he would pull out immediately. Um, and also the fact that he's a he, he's born from a really wealthy family. Um, it's he's just kind like of a white dude. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not about just about being a white dude. It's also about he is considered a generally more privileged artist he has a lot more um resources like you know how a lot of artists especially with like huge sculpture or like public sculptures like these you have to get funding because it, mm. it's sometimes it's just so impossible expensive. yeah and um he just had the means and resources to do it because he is wealthy and yeah he it kind of really symbolizes how him himself as a white artist in the contemporary world wealthy and then exploited this identity to um in some way he i mean he felt it was appropriate obviously and maybe for him it was like how how he named the work a surge of power but whose power feel, is it is it his I feel like i when i mentioned in the group chat Mm. I think Javier was like, I don't, I didn't even know that was by him. Like, if you don't know it's by him, it seems so like powerful and amazing. Yeah. And then yeah. when you find out it's yeah. by him, you're like, oh, like, why would they? I didn't realize to begin with that he just put it up there without like authorization. That kind of makes it seem horrible when he could, when the chance could have been given to a black artist or someone who, yeah, would yeah. have needed funding or he with his resources could have engineered something for somebody else to have a chance. But I'm guessing that he had to ask permission to the city hall or something. You can just... No, 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 no. no he didn't. No, no. He, just he just said, did it. He just, he just did it. He just did it. He Mark yeah. Wynn. He just did it. He literally no. messaged that girl on Instagram, said, come over, I'm going to do this sculpture. Cost. And then made it, and then popped over on July 15th and put it up. <laughs> Isn't that horrible? Like, like, what are you doing? <laughs> It's a perfect rendition of the idea of, you know, um, a white privileged male taking advantage of the situation. Maybe yeah, exactly. Do whatever he, can, he wants to do, just like in the past, just like Edward Colston saying, giving some shitty excuse and just exploiting the opportunity. And without even asking people, just like how back then people were doing it, they didn't even ask permission of these, you know, slaves and they just took them because they just wanted to. They, they were like it's a massive opportunist stunt yeah and i think the old capitalistic thinking of well oh, that's my idea i have to do it before someone else does it yeah and like i think he tried to make it seem better by being like it was very very collaborative with jen reed and <sighs> she was there like every step of the way i think thomas price who's like a black artist he was the first person who really like publicly pinpoint Mark Quinn kind of used it as a stunt. Also responds to the whole um, social media situation where you see it on, on the picture and then you don't, it's like what we always talk about, like question what you're seeing because from the exterior, it's, it's incredible. It's incredibly powerful. But then when you dig deeper, you see all the problems beneath the, yeah, the, I the saw- work. So many articles written on this and yeah. loads of them this is 
mostly in the big newspapers weren't writing about it being a problem at all they were like oh it's like amazing and you know you have a symbol for power whatever and then one of them was like you know some horrible racist statue was up there for 125 years Mm. and then a pro black lives matter one only i think it was only there for like 24 or 25 hours or something Mm -hmm. Uh, because i think he did say it was temporary but you know i don't know if he meant temporary by 25 hours like the fact that he thought about it like i'm gonna spend this much money to make this thing i mean temporary but rich yeah (laughs) but is it better to have nothing up there or have this statue until they find a a permanent statue made by whatever however the program's going to run an artist i think they shouldn't have this statue there until they find something once you know mark Wynn did it it completely takes away any meaning of you know bravery and protest and how powerful the statue is so i don't know it would be like a guy writing a feminist manifesto it wouldn't make sense yeah. It's also kind of like he's done it knowing it's, I don't know if it's illegal, but breaking the rules. <clears throat> well, and it's hard. Knowing he'll yeah. get away with it, which is like one of the issues yeah. is that white people tend to be, tend to be able to get away with things a lot easier and have like even things like, you know, no, not even a sentence or like a much shorter sentence than someone who's black. And he was just like, I know I will probably not get into trouble it'll be fine there's also the, the the idea of resources available if i'm very rich and i can pay for a statue and i put that statue somewhere and it has a lot of meaning and it's very related to what's happening there's more chances that people will be like oh that's hard that's very clever if i don't have those resources maybe I, all i can do is just write in the wall or something and then it's people are going to be like oh this is just vandalism so i guess if he went all the way to actually make a statue and put it there he's going to be more able to get away with it because it looks more legit than another form of intervening in that plan. You know what I mean? Is it just self, is it just self promo? Well, yes, this is Isn't it just performative activism. <coughs> like he's just so transparent once you know who it is. So I am I a very, think... I'm a very cynic person. And I think that he just saw an amazing opportunity to do the thing that everyone was going to love. He rushed to do it. He was like, I need that woman now and a cast of her and put it there. It's going to be great. And he prepared the entire discourse of what if it backfires on me later, you know? Or I think he just didn't really think about it. Like in a way, I I wouldn't say I'm completely on his side, but then I think from his perspective, it could also just be like an artistic impulse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you have the resource, you're just like, holy shit, I really want to do it because I'm, I'm fascinated by this yeah. one particular picture of Jen Reed. Um, I think it would work beautifully. Um, I want to do it. So he did it. But I doubt that he, you know, so when someone is established as Mark Quinn, I think he probably has some sort of team of, I don't know, someone who tells him this is a good idea, this is not. Maybe I'm making mm, this up. I no? don't think so. I, I think- feel he's... They couldn't even stop him. Yeah, exactly. exactly. No. <laughs> so then, then I think he should have. So someone like an artist who has to be so much in tune with reality and what's happening to actually work in the things. I doubt he didn't contemplate a scenario where people would be like, wait, you're white. I don't know. I think they'd be like, oh, it's Mark. He thought, oh, it's Mark Quinn. Like, oh, that he's great. Like himself is like, well, but that's Mark. Yeah, they'll be like, the, <laughs> it's me. Like, think they'll be what do you like, mean? oh, it's a Mark uh, it's, Quinn. It's Mark Quinn. He's done it's something me. crazy again, and well, so, we, but he, he's not known for being crazy. No, yeah, why don't he's known for being controversial? Though. Well, he did that yeah. thing with his blood, right? Yeah, yeah. and but, yeah, I mean, I feel like he's riding off that. Like, I think and he did the the Sphinx thing, which I still don't understand. And so the Sphinx is a statue. It's a cast of Kate Moss, I think it was, like a yeah. model. And she's doing this yoga position with, where her legs are like crossed behind. Oh, right. Yeah. Her, it's her, like her impossible head. to do. Or yeah. I think she can't actually do it. No. And but she agreed to it. I don't know what it means exactly. I never understood that culture. I think it's about like the female ideal in the world is kind of unrealistic. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because right. she's doing something really fucking unrealistic, and you know, Kate Moss is like this beautiful model that everyone, you know, 
kind of well, prize her you, in her beauty. Like that. When you put it like that, it kind of makes sense. But I still don't like it. I think it's a very ugly structure. <laughs> and but again, but like plus, it's not about it being pretty. It's about yeah. Remember that, kids. Yeah. Kid, ugly and and beautiful are outdated terms. But you know, <laughs> thanks, Dad. Also, I read. You're welcome, son. I read that. Saying to his girlfriend, like, "Oh, I'm not going to say you're beautiful because it's an outdated <laughs> yeah. term." Um, but also, I read that apparently the Sphinx he made it in gold, and it's the biggest gold statue done since ancient yeah. Egypt. Mark oh, where did he? Where did he source the fucking gold now? I... Oh, <laughs> from Africa probably. But um, so I honestly don't can don't really like. His production, it's not my kind of guy when in terms of art. Yeah. To be honest, like I've written about him like with other artists. Right. You did. And every time I remember. I'd be writing, I'd have nothing there's it's so it's like so surface level. Like not only what he says about his own art, but like what other how other people comment on his art. And right. I was <clears throat> would be writing about other artists who were maybe exploring the same themes and there was like it was so layered like how they got there like what it meant his was very like i'm just going to do something where i know people will talk about it even with one of the statues in the fourth plane yeah. that we talked about in that episode was the statue of um of another artist which is a woman that was oh, born an amputee alison dapper yeah she was born without arms and I think with shortened legs. He made a huge statue of her for the... I think It's very surface level. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it, I don't think he's an artist that really goes for a very complicated symbology or anything like that. He's more on like, this is it. Yeah. Mark I feel like that's a bit of the staple of... Because he's a part of the young British artist. Yeah. yeah. From like the 1990s. Mm, um, and I feel like that's kind of a staple of that group trying to be sensational, trying to... It's no, really it's like work. simple. Yeah. Uh, right. It's about like genuine feeling. It's kind of like how, you know, the whole deal about uh, his ex. He made a lot of sculptures and cast of her. And, uh, and then she was saying how she felt like she was just an object. She felt objectified, mm -hmm. even though they were like seeing each other. Right. That, um, that, and he, he said, yeah. And he said, um, but then all of those works are kind of a devotion for you like it's about me expressing mm -hmm. your my affection towards you through yeah. these sculptures so i mean in a way it's a, it's very poetic but with the whole argument that now with the statue we're constantly talking about mark quinn yeah you know we just say oh yeah it's a statue of jen reed but yeah i mean how does she feel on this whole situation she collaborated I, on this she yeah. i think she because i saw an interview with her she felt very proud to be on that. Yeah, the I think that's, the that's fair too. though. It's fair to like be given an opportunity like that and express what it was you were protesting about. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think that's totally fair. And like, I didn't, I don't agree when like I've seen negative comments about like her involvement in it, but right. I have a quote by him. Nope. So you can tell me what you think okay. Okay, oh, please. about this. Close yes. He said uh, that the sculpture is an embodiment and amplification of Jen's ideas and experiences. End of the past, the present, and her hope for a better future. I mean, it's, it's a way how you package works. Like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, what bugs me about the art world the most, is that packaging of words that they sometimes, well, most of the time do with an artwork. Well, it's especially like with Mark Quinn, his works aren't very surface level, but then he creates this aura with fancy words where you're like what the i mean even yeah. though like making a, a life castle of a person technically it is like it, it does encapsulate that idea of that particular moment when she did that it, but it's more like on whose terms yeah but oh, okay lost lost it <laughs> <laughs> lost it, <laughs> lost it. Might come back guys that statue was removed by Bristol City Council, yeah. okay. and they said to Mark Quinn publicly, nope. "You either come here and collect it, or we're gonna do, or it'll be donated to their collection." So, like, an, I imagine, like a local museum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, he, he well, he has said that if it were to ever be sold, he would give the money to charities which were chosen by yeah. Jen Reed. Um, yeah. 
which promote the inclusion of black history in the uh, UK education uh, school curriculum yeah like what do we think about that because that to me <laughs> seems like we could have started with him thinking oh I want to be involved and then the donation part and instead he's gone like I want to be involved I'm going to make a statue that's going to get my name and then I'm going to like say it's because I'm going to say it's very collaborative with this girl and then I'm going to let her pick the charities like to me uh, that's lovely but it could have been so much simpler like the stop along the way where he gets his name in the press is just like a bit annoying I guess well, in a way he could have you know um, asked a black artist to collaborate yeah yeah and but, you know fund the production of it mm-hmm. I mean but then again we live in the system we live in and the priority of any contemporary artist, I think it's find a way to put their name on it, you know? Yeah, but that's what it shows what's going on. It's a bit hypocritical to say, I'm going to sell this statue that I, a white man, did to promote the history of black people. It's like manufacturing their story in a way, you know? But because then, you, like I what mean, Chris said, it makes right. sense to either collaborate or fund, because then it it's like a new name and it's very well known because it would have been covered a lot by the press, you know, the fact that this statue has been put there. Or even would, just even, like a open call for yeah. emerging black artists mm-hmm. to, yeah. right. to um, apply. And then, I mean, not necessarily like he would choose or maybe have a few friends look at all the works. Or... I mean, I, I like that idea, but I think it would be a bit controversial and people would be like, oh, there's a white man patronizing. But then it's more like he acts as a patron because, yeah, um, you know how, yeah, it's like how, you know, black artists have been talking about um, this white privilege and wealth or like financial privilege that they don't have. So if they were given the financial means and resources to do it, does that make it better? I think it does. How I would do it is I would convince the Bristol City Hall to put the funds for this their money is com- neutral in a way and it comes directly mm, from, down. from the public yeah it yeah. comes directly from the public which from poses the more problems yeah well i feel like i'm pretty sure the public say... paid for the statue of edward cost so yeah but i was like no i i doubt it I don't you know. know how you know i mean the, the reason why fort flint was remained empty was because that guy didn't put funds to make his statue yeah. so i i, I think Bad possibly point. it would be the family of called the Costants, who um, the Costants. <laughs> to, put, the to put Eddie on. It's if the sculpture sells, the money will go to charities. Yeah, which is good. But if it doesn't sell, then all that happened is that Mark Quinn got a really big name and that, yeah. that was it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, there's no guarantee that it would even happen. Whereas if he had made a plan where like, they'd be, it would be guaranteed that money would go towards these charities, like i think we might be a bit more sympathetic but this is like if it happens i think what makes it the most problematic is that it's a public sculpture that kind of involves the whole debate around what is public art like is it there to commemorate is it there to generate discourse because what we see right here kind of like two groups like it's a conflict between two groups of public the the work also hasn't sit there enough to create firstly a genuine impact or have people digest what is it about. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if the situation would not have happened and you know, the statue was just thrown in the river mm. and Mark Quinn didn't do anything, city of Bristol would have selected or, you know, via a open call, or, would we then, you know, give enough attention to it or would we just say, oh, it's great that the city of Bristol gave the opportunity to a black artist Let's move on. I think right now, although it is very controversial, it did grab our attention to the matter. There's still such a long way to go in in the whole debate. I think the problem with the sculpture is that it it sort of demonized white people. Not demonized, (laughs) but like um, antagonized. I'm so interested now. (laughs) I was like, Uh, (laughs) okay. it, I think it antagonized uh, the white mm-hmm. community and, you know, the white middle class, the white upper class. It, it completely demonized the whole 
debate around white artists and their position in the art world. Um, right. And what are they not doing instead of what are they doing? If it was, you know, smoothly done through the Bristol Council that they select and stuff like that. Obviously, there's another debate around, like, yeah. there's a committee who selects those works. Yeah. Thus, that makes it problematic because it's a, it's, it's a small group of people who... It's a small group of people who decide <laughs> what the work is. They announced. Have they announced who who are going to be in the committee? No, no they, I don't think there was much information that had come out. I think they mm. were trying to figure out how it would be decided, like who could apply that kind of thing. Yeah. But you know, these things always take a really long time because yeah. yeah, it's like forming a committee, it's mm -hmm. making sure we've got the funds, it's loads of stuff. And I think they were trying to figure out how to fill that plinth with something meaningful. But in the way, it does pinpoint the idea of um, monuments in the public space and yeah. how people react to it, the discourse that generates from it, which is but very powerful. Did, um, because this happened, mm -hmm. I think you said his ex came out and was like, yeah, he used me, you know, he like, has, has me. we, we, oh. Imagine you break up with someone and you're like, oh, but he has pictures of me or something. This woman is like, he has casts of me. He can make me <laughs> in bronze. The thing is that his name was out in the press and stuff because of this. And then his ex was like, well, now that we're talking about him, he's not even <laughs> that great. Do you think she's using that opportunity to give her attention? I was about, I was about to say that. I'm not because sure. What I she's a model, isn't she? What's well, her well, name well. again? Jenny Bastet. Jenny. Yeah, Jenny. Yeah. I don't know because I think it's just because this has happened loads recently where someone's name gets bounced around because they've signed on to a new TV show, like literally anything. And then people come out and be like, oh, hey, because his name is out, I'm now going to come out and say, here was my experience. Mm. I don't think it was like for extra like clout that she was doing that. Like, I wish I was surprised with him, but I'm not. <laughs> I didn't like him before this, really. I don't really like him now even more. Yeah. Like, it wouldn't be surprising if he did something else which boosts his career again. And, you know, whilst walking over the op an opportunity that could have been given to someone else. I think what would be really interesting is that, um, you know how Bans Bansky? Bansky? Is that how you pronounce his name? Bansky. 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 Marcus. Um, Bansky. Oh, Bansky. <laughs> Bansky. Bansky, he made uh, like a graffiti on the tube. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, he pretended to be a janitor or something like that, or like a conductor, whatever. And I think what, what's interesting here is that he used his anonymous identity yeah. to react to it. And the fact that we don't really know, what is he? Is he, is he a she? Is it a he? Is well, he, I mean, we is know. Is he white? Is he black? Is he <laughs> he's, what? He's Belgian. <laughs> There's a, I'll explain. There's a theory that one of our lecturers is Banksy. <laughs> because we keep mentioning Marcus and Banksy, and I don't think anyone's understanding what we're talking about. One of our lectures <laughs> is Banksy, I'm sure of it, and my thesis is about it. And I think it's really interesting how we don't see that as like a opportunist stunt. It's more like... Oh, I think Banks is such an opportunistic artist. Oh, oh my God! Yeah. Was it? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh wow! I didn't. Think... Wow. Okay. I do like Banksy. I just think he. You really please does... pick a side. <laughs> <laughs> this is not opposite sides. You can be. I, you can think someone is a very clever person in as well, like when to do an artwork or what to put in an artwork, mm. but and still like it. I still like them. You know. And I think Banks is really good at that. He's like, he knows what to do and when to do it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But it's not like, and, and I like him. I think he's a really good guy. He's a, he's a good chap. Um, when he does it, I don't get this instant feeling of greedy bastard like I get with Mark Quinn when he does this sort of things. Yeah. You know? True. With Banksy, I'm like, good for you, man. Good stuff. Good for you. Nicely done. Even if both are kind of a surface level kind of thingy, but mm. it's Banksy. Sometimes it's really like for idiots what you're seeing, like the painting of the British Parliament with chimpanzees. Yeah, like, wow, that was good. So yeah, deep, like man. That. But um, it's not about that. It's about um, making it 
it's kind of like making it accessible it's mm-hmm. it, it speaks to everyone on different levels like the moment you see it you understand what is going on and i think what's great about it is that it, it exactly does what we're trying to do is to uncomplicate art make right. it accessible make it easy to read and i think that's yeah. what he does and obviously it, um, the, the fact that he made a, a thing on the on the tube it's it's a direct reaction i mean he is he wants everyone to understand like he wants yeah. every, that's his thing he just wants everyone to get it he's not there to make i'm sure he didn't start thinking i will be an artist he probably thought like i want to say something and want everyone to understand why are people liking this but fine that's why people like him so much because they all understand you don't need to have a degree yeah. in art that's a philosophy of graffiti artist but again i would say that for example basquiat which mm. we've also already talked about yes. in in a podcast he has his artwork has more layers than banks mm. but that's a theme for an entire different episode yeah. my point to begin with was that you can be very you know surface level the way banks is and know when to talk about certain things and then you can be Mark Quinn, like loud and important, like, look at this statue, it's controversial, it's a black artist and it's in the plinth of Edward Colts and all that. He just saw the, saw the opportunity, went for it, and now he has a whole list of speeches ready for defending it. You know, like, yeah, for example, like to exonerate him from yeah. the fact like, no, that but, he, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, but it's about the press and the past and the future of this. And, and I collaborated art, loads activist. with her, so like, conclusion, do we like it? No. no. I think um, it is a powerful word. Yes. It's really successful in generating all this discourse. Yes. Yeah. This but, was important to talk about because of what it sort of represents. And yeah. Like even just the act of what doing it. The yeah. question is, is he going to get away with it saying, oh, but my plan all along was to get people talking <laughs> about white people doing sculpture. He's so annoying. And if, so he annoying. Do, if he does that, I'm going to make a cast of him and make a statue of him somewhere. 10,000 likes. We already have Quasi. We cannot have too yeah. many statues. We can make a Quasi with Mark Quinn's face. No. <laughs> no, that's the worst of everything. Well, no, Christy, Christy doesn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds we, we can make every statue Mark Quinn has ever done and turn into his face. You know, like and Mark then, Quinn doing the... the... The fingernails could be like all of those little ones. Oh. oh. Horrible. Nothing. Nothing. Lapper. 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 Jen Reed. Kate Moss. I don't know, oh, you mean the names of the quasi? I see. X. So they're yeah. in the in the nails. Mark Quinn's face. But quasi is like, quasi is like he's, this. So he's yeah, standing so like the, on the, the women. Yeah, he's standing on them. On the women. <laughs> standing on the faces of I'm glad Kate Moss and again, Ken Reed. Great. We've come up with a really good <laughs> yes. plan at the end of our podcast of what we wish to do. We need funding though. That involves quasi <laughs> once again. <laughs> when you see a statue or a work of art or anything. Don't stay with what you're seeing. Find out who did it, why they did it, and all that. It's important. Yeah, because to be honest, when I first saw the pictures, I was like, oh, that's amazing. Thinking yeah. it was an authorized sculpture, probably by an artist that was like, yeah, yeah. publicly funded. Work. And then as it came out, oh, it's Mark Quinn. Oh, it's unauthorized. Oh, we've removed it. Yeah. It's, yeah, it changes your perspective on it. Yeah. But I, if you were to walk past it one day, not knowing anything you'd probably think like this is a great idea and a great sculpture yeah it's a great commemorative sculpture yeah but it, it's just some guy who wanted to once again have his name in the papers okay well love you loads love you please like subscribe tell your mom forward it to your facebook account yes Instagram. text your friends whatsapp group yeah. uh, message ronnie van who for us please. and tell him we love quasi the sculpture Hope you enjoyed listening to this episode as much as we enjoyed making it. If you especially loved our episode, we would love it if you gave it a 5 star rating and a review and even consider taking a screenshot of this episode and posting it on your Instagram stories. That way we know that you loved it and other people can find our podcast as well. If you're not subscribed yet, again, what are you doing? Subscribe and get notified every time we publish a new episode. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Chart Podcast. And if you want to see our faces while we talk, find us on YouTube at Chart Podcast as well. We are Chart and we'll hope we'll meet you again at some point in the near future. Take care. Chart out. Love you. <laughs> see you. Love see you. Later. Bye. Bye. Bye.